name is Ian McLaughlin. Um, I kind of had a presentation in the summer session. And now I'm doing two projects over the summer. Lower, which is like a flow chart for the implementation. Um, Alex Fresca and a couple of guys are doing a two-dimensional implementation uh, last spring, I think. And uh, towards the end of spring, what I accomplished was I made like a little bit of a 3D rendering program, which would just lay out the nodes randomly using just random integers and then sort them based on graph theory. And so I picked it up again over the summer, worked on it a little bit. And um, what I did was I actually would store the, uh, I'm trying to figure out a way to store the data so that it wouldn't be randomly generated. If the same data set wouldn't make a different, basically, model every single time you ran it. So um, I guess this is what it looked like originally. And what I had to do was actually redo the entire back end of it because um, the way that this one actually ran was it would just literally go out, grab random integers, place the nodes, create lines based on the locations that were stored for those nodes. And then it would go through and actually move them by increments of 10 over and over and over. And the way I wanted to do it was, you know, to support back edges and, you know, traverse the graph the right way. So um, the first problem is yeah, the random issue, um, random data sets, when you basically just go and get random, like, coordinates when you first start, because I have to lay them out there. I had this sort of collision detection thing going on where I would store all the coordinates of each node and the radius of each node. And then I would go in and see if, look through an array and see if that was already taken. And if it was, I would just kind of move to the right. So the first thing I did was just lay them all out there. And then after that, I needed a way to actually store all the data um, permanently so that after I actually made something, like I said, it wouldn't be completely different the next time I refresh the page. So I played around with XML and ActiveX, and that was kind of a nightmare. So I'm still working on that one. Um, the back edge data, I wanted to actually change the way that the input's working. The way I have it working right now is it'll actually create another line from the node back to the original node. And I want to try and find a way to actually, the way you iterate through the graph with the data, I want to have it find a way to actually be able to go back without actually making the graph look more complicated. And so I was going to talk to the guys who made the 2D implementation about that and see if we can actually get the data to be exported in a better way so that I can work with it more. And um, I want to create a nice UI because the way it looks right now, it still looks like this. It's just kind of boring. And I have two keys. There's iterating keys, Q and E, I'll show you in a minute, to kind of go through and traverse the graph. And you can just zoom in and spin it around in 3D space. That's about all I have with it right now. And I also want to put uh, meshes on it. So you know, I actually have textures to the, to the nodes to actually represent what they are and uh, that kind of stuff. And I also want to, uh, I kind of want to put it, push it to a public database like on a server so that I can actually see, um, you know, and store the data, not locally so that the computer doesn't generate each time. Because if you say you have the same data set, it'll still look different than someone else's computer or even a different browser, the way I have it right now. So I kind of want to have it go into a public database. And I want a way to search through the database that's really, really efficient, like caching all the data at the table instead of just going line by line and making sure all the nodes are the same. So uh, let me show you what that looks like right now. So as I said, you can kind of iterate through them, zooming in and out, and then you can kind of iterate through the graph going this way. And I also want to have lines connecting to it. But right now it's actually running the right way, traversing the graph properly. Just uh, It just doesn't really work with back edge cases. So if I load up a table, they're all in a uh, JSON files, and I load up a table that has any packages at all. It just doesn't make any sense. You kind of get lost in the graph. So, um, the second the second program I've been working on, this has been the main concentration of my summer, uh, is CryptLock. And um, it's basically just you take a secure message, and let's say you want to like send someone your social security number or something important. The best way I found to do that wasn't just to you know, email the message or even encrypt it. What I wanted to do is actually have a completely server-side implementation of some sort of encryption where you could just send someone a hashed out bunch of gibberish in an email, have them be able to decrypt it using their email service, and then actually you know, use, use a key. Or This is 128-bit uh, AES implementation, so um, it uses 10 cycles, so it iterates through 10 times. And it's AES, it was, uh, it's based off of a cipher, and it was used by the US in 2001, it was implemented. And Still using the CIA today, so it's pretty good. It takes a, it's really hard to actually crack using brute force. So this is my first time doing a cipher, and uh, initially I did it in JavaScript, and then I moved on to PHP because I realized JavaScript didn't really work for 
this sort of thing. Um, so storing the information anywhere would kind of render the whole thing insecure. So I kind of created a PHP server, like a global one. I actually registered a domain and did all that. And I got an email server. And um, I want to be able to send encrypted data in a URL, so passing the hash data through a URL. If you guys saw my initial uh, talk, and I kind of had that working a little bit. Um, so yeah, initially it was in JavaScript, so I didn't really know anything about PHP, so I did a little bit of time studying it and learning how, to, how it worked. And I kind of struggled with how PHP, you know, you can't really debug it. You kind of have to push it into like a text document and then read it. And that was kind of a nightmare for me, but I kind of figured it out. And then passing variables with a certain character, like a and, and uh, anything pretty much that PHP didn't agree with in the URL bar. Because the way that the AES encryption worked is it would generate you know, characters just based on bit shifting and that kind of thing. So anything that was actually a character PHP would recognize in the URL bar would kind of mess up the whole thing, and even if it was a certain length. So I had to do some base conversions for that. And um, this is how it works right now. You kind of put in a key. You answer your email that you want to send it to. My server actually will email the client an actual like link, and you click on the link, and it'll dehash it inside. It'll connect you back to the website, and you input the key. So you have to actually transfer the key to the person using a different method. So I figured you can call them up and be like, the password is, I don't know, whatever, and then you can actually email them the hash dot data, and then they can. That way, everything is in the same place. And. Um, so yeah, I want to add eye candy. It kind of looks pretty boring right now. It's just a bunch of text fields and forms. I want to add functionality for files as well as strings. Um, longer messages, there is a character limit. Um, and I want to have user accounts to actually send things between users rather than having to use a third party email provider to check the emails. And yeah, so I guess I'll just do a demo. So let's say I want to encrypt Password, Arcos. Also, sometimes I go into the junk email box, which I don't really know how to deal with. I don't know why that happens, but I might need some help with that. One of the things you might want to do to avoid ending up in spam yeah. is uh, make sure you're sending it from a domain that matches the domain that's actually sending it. A lot of times, you know, Gmail will pretty much throw out anything. Yeah, it's coming stuff. from my server right now. That one actually made it. But. So yeah, I just basically have it in here as a hashed out function. Put it in. Click on the link. It cooperates. I think it's Arcos, and you get that. And if you actually have anything different, cases anything, you won't be able to do it. So, yeah. And um, thanks to the usual suspects. I'm sure, there's a lot of questions and stuff. So, yeah. Questions. Are you doing the um, encryption in the browser or server side? Encryption is actually happening in the browser. It's being passed over server side. The same way decryption is also done. Yep. Yeah, decryption and encryption are both JavaScript and all the passing variables. Any other questions? Yep. Were you using 3.js? Yep, it was all 3.js. Sorry, I should have said that. Yeah, it's all WebGL 3.js. Is there a reason you use 3? 
Honestly, when I started this, this was all my first uh, web-based stuff, so I just Googled what was the most powerful, best way to do 3D space stuff, and everyone said 3.js, so that's why I jumped into it. And it, it was also it had a lot of support and documentation. So. You, you should say that people use your USSF as a part of a tool for something else. For something yeah, that's what I was thinking. That, yeah. that, that, that way you can uh, yeah, broaden uh, yeah. your product. That's what I figured.